Hey, what's up everyone? AU5 here with another serum tutorial. This time constructing an actual base. I'm going to show you how to make what I like to call the hyper growl. This technique I discovered will use exclusively serum, no preset wavetables, no sample importing, no external effects, and will yield a different, unique sound each time. So let's begin. Open serum and initialize the patch. Go into the wavetable editor and create a square wave. Next, turn up the unison voices to at least 6. I'm going to do 10, and turn the detune down to around 0.1. So now we have a super square. So assign your LFO 1 to the wavetable position and create a ramp. And then set your rate to 2 bars or 1 bar. As of right now, it's not going to be doing anything because there's no wavetable. It's just a single cycle wave. Until we start resampling. So in order to do that, go up to the menu and click Resample to Oscillator A. As you can see, the super square that we had is resampled into a wavetable. And now we're going to super the super square, or make a hyper square. Let's continue doing this. Notice the more we do this, we have more notches in the frequency spectrum, creating a softer and more watery effect. This should be enough times. So now I'm going to disable Unison and bypass the wavetable modulator temporarily. So now we're going to clean up this wavetable. Go into the wavetable editor, go to process, remove fundamental, and then normalize each. Now our wavetable is maximized. There's a bit too much movement in here to actually make use of all of it, so we're going to constrain our wavetable to a range that has some good movement and some good harmonic resonance. Anywhere could really work, but we want to have around 50 or so frames so we can interpolate them smoothly. Let's do 100 to 150. Now we're going to go to Add Remove, Remove remove All Except Selected. And let's use Spectral Morph to smoothly interpolate them. Great. So at this point, we can either use an LFO to modulate the growl or use a macro to modulate the growl. I like using macros because I have more control. But in this case, let's use an LFO just for convenience sake. So I'm going to unbypass this and create a new LFO shape and make sure it is re-triggered. And let's do half a bar. So right now, there's a little too much movement still. I'm going to constrain this even more, and then we can tweak it later. So now that we found some good resonant movement in our wavetable and created a modulator for it, let's start filtering. So turn on your filter and set it to high 24. Turn up the resonance a bit and assign your same modulator to the cutoff. We're going to be using one modulator, in this case an LFO, for all of the movement in this patch. So constrain the cutoff to about a quarter of the full range. and start playing and you'll be able to hear a sweet spot. There we go, now it's starting to sound growly. Let's turn up the fat and make it louder. Great. Since we removed the fundamental from this wavetable, we need to reintroduce it using the sub. But we're going to set it to direct out so it's not affected by the effects that we're about to put on it. So turn on the EQ and bring it to the top. What we want to do is create low pass filtering for when the modulator is at zero. And we can create a notch or a peak as well to create more movement. 
either accentuating the growl or cutting out certain frequencies that we don't like. This sounds good to me. Next, let's turn on the dimension expander so we can get some width back into this. Let's throw a multiband compressor on here and make it brighter and thicker. All right, so our growl is pretty much established. So now we can start fine tuning it and make it sound even cooler and more unique. So what I like to do is use the flanger filter to create a tonal delay. And what I'm going to do is use the note number modulator to modulate the cutoff. What this is going to do is no matter what note we hit, the flanger filter will be tuned to that note. So let's turn up the resonance. So the flanger filter's lowest cutoff frequency is about 8 hertz. So what we need to do is gradually reduce the cutoff so it is perfectly in tune with our key. So I'm going to hold down shift and slowly bring this down. There we go, that sounds perfectly in tune. Let's bring the mix back a little. A bit of treble is lost from this filter, so we can bring it back using the multiband compressor's high band. So let's add a little bit more movement. Let's throw the static chorus effect on there, and create some comb filtering. We don't need a lot of movement, just a little bit of subtlety. Let's throw on a static phaser as well. It's starting to sound pretty good. So at this point, we can do some further tweaking of our wavetable position and our filtering to get a more fine-tuned effect. in that. We can also use some bend mode. Let's use bend plus just for the peaks. Go into the matrix and adjust the curve of this modulator so it only hits when it's just at the very top of the LFO. As you can see, the possibilities are pretty endless. Every time I create a hypersquare from resampling, it's going to sound entirely different. Lastly, we can use distortion at the end either as a saturator or, like I showed in my sidechain ducking with Serum FX tutorial, we can use it as a volume attenuator. So let's go to the cross shaper and select edit B and just flatten this out. So now our drive is going to be essentially a crossfade between full volume and silence. So let's use a LFO2 to modulate that. And we can add a little bit more saturation by just boosting this curve up a little bit uh, under edit A. 
And we can also modulate the sub level with this too, so it really wobbles. Let's add some glide. I want to show you a few more interesting tips I discovered. So here's a hyper growl that I previously made. As you can see, it's all macro modulated. Uh, and something that I did was use one of the macros to very slightly detune the cutoff of the flanger filter. And you can get some really interesting atonal sounding uh, dissonant effects with that. So check this out. Also, what we can do is go into the wavetable editor and go down to multis squareify. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove all even harmonics from the entire wavetable. And you're going to get a much more metallic, squarier sound like this. <laughs> Say there are some overtones that are not in the wavetable that you want to accentuate. We, what we can do is turn on oscillator B, go into our table editor, and hit clear all. And now if we modulate our level, we can introduce specific harmonic frequencies into our growl. For instance. <laughs> We can even warp them. Oh, don't forget to turn on your filter for oscillator B. Here's a little demo loop I made that showcases some of the sounds you can get from using this technique. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it was somewhat educational, or at least entertaining to watch. I've been considering setting up a Patreon page for sharing exclusive content like tutorials, sample packs, preset packs, and whatnot. Let me know your ideas in the comments for any exclusive production-related content you'd like me to put out. Anyway, stay creative, stay inspired, and thanks for watching. Peace.